So they're growing cotton. Enterprise, Alabama, 1910, and the boll weevil wipes them out. What do you do? What do you do when you had all the answers, you don't even have the question. You either live in vision, you live in circumstance. What do you do? Here comes the circumstance, people. This is awful. This is terrible. Let's go get drunk. Go down to bar, complain about it. Call it happy hour. <laughs> do I have any vision people in here? What, what do the vision people say? There's a brand new crop. It's 1910. It's called the peanut. You either live in vision, you live in circumstance. Let's plant it. They plant it. It catches on. They become the richest county in the United States of America from the peanut, from harvesting. Has anybody found a peanut in here lately? And if you go to Enterprise, Alabama today, you know what's in the middle of town? A big statue of a bug. <laughs> it's the only place in the world where an, intersect, where an insect was honored. <laughs> they get drunk, steal it now, and then bring it back in the morning. <laughs> Watch this caption. I took you through this whole story to bring you to this point. Underneath, see, the, the statue's in my little boy's window. We're going to go see the statue next Friday. Underneath the statue, watch this, here comes the good part. It says, thank you, oh, I wish somebody's mind would think like this in Washington, D.C. Thank you, Mr. Bull Weevil, for the role you played in our prosperity. Come on, do you think like that? See, I, I, I played college football, and I kept on bringing my best friend home to eat my father's cabbage roll. My father put together a cabbage roll. And after about six visits home, my best friend decided, he was going to steal my girlfriend. <laughs> Unfortunately, my girlfriend decided that he was going to steal her. <laughs> you know, after the emotion subsided, I had this thought. I don't know what he sees in her. <laughs> That's not good. You know, it was kind of like that country western song, my wife left town with my best friend, and I miss him. <laughs> Watch the next thought I had. When's the last time you had this thought? Watch the next thought I had. When's the last time you had this prayer? I need to go to a higher level. My friends were so much better. My wife was so much better than that. You either live in vision or you live in circumstance. Are you coping or are you growing? So it's December 15th and I pull into my home in Pittsburgh and 920's on my phone. That's Green Bay. Elks, Mike McCarthy, head coach of the Packers. Mike, what's up? Did you see my game this weekend? I said, I don't. I was with my kids this weekend. I'm not a golfer. I'm a miniature golfer. <laughs> he said, we just got beat bad by the Detroit Lions. My quarterback got knocked out concussion. He's done. I got to win the next three games to get in. I got to go and beat the Patriots with my backup. Then I got to come back. I got to beat the Giants. Then I got to beat the Bears just to get in. And you're going to help me. I said, you should have called the Pope the way I see this. <laughs> we had a rally call. Oh, this isn't a religious story. This is a story about how some people's minds work. We had a rally call. You guys are excellent. And you're enjoying this, it seems like it. But not all, everyone gets this talk. We had a rally call the whole way through. See, some people say, I will believe it when I see it. Some people say, I will see it when I believe it. Here was the rally call. Thomas Jefferson took a pair of scissors to his Bible. He cut out the walking on the water. Not everybody gets this talk. He cut out the whole separating of the sea. Some people say, you know, that little guy talked funny. I didn't get him. My wife says that. <laughs> Can I tell you the rally call for the, for, for the, I spoke every night before they played after that game all the way through the Super Bowl. Our rally call was, I don't need any scissors. We're suffering from a little bit of post-traumatic faith disorder. We don't need it. I think anything can happen. You either live in vision or you live in circumstance. Number two, you women and men are sitting here because of attitude. You people, a lot of people quit, but you took a lick and kept ticking because of attitude. A lot of people stopped, but you pushed on through. Woman comes to a store, says, every time I come in this store, you don't have the book I want. I'm so tired of it. Who does the ordering around here? Young man behind the counter says, what's the book you want, man? She said, I want a book called How to Remain Young and Beautiful. He said, I'll order that for you right now. Mark on there, urgent. <laughs> Ready for the second one? Come on. Ready? Attitude 
attitude is not a gene. You want to know somebody has a good attitude around you? It's not a gene. They didn't get it from mama. It's a muscle. They understand it. They work it. They spend time on it. They push it. It's a muscle. You know, they have a system. What I just said to you is if I don't exercise a muscle, it will come on. This is a good-looking crowd. That muscle will give me the word. Atrophy. And if I don't exercise my attitude, my attitude will. So tell me about your attitude aerobics in here. Tell me about your attitude Pilates. I got to keep doing it. I got to keep doing it. 1995, I'm on the sidelines of Pittsburgh Steelers. We're playing the Dallas Cowboys. I, there's this, there's a, a cowboy. He's going to return a punt. But before he returns a punt, TV timeout. He's riding a horse up and down our sideline, and he's spanking the horse, and he's riding the horse. There's only one little problem with this whole thing. There was no horse. <laughs> Got a doctor in psychology. I can see a fruitcake like that. <laughs> It's Deion Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> he asked all the Steelers, what sideline do you want to see me return this punt? We said, come our way. We're going to get you. He started riding his horse again. <laughs> he grabs a punt. He runs right out Pittsburgh, and he waves at us like this, and he went all the way up our sideline and touched him. <laughs> so the next year, I started working for the Cowboys. <laughs> My first day there in Wichita Falls, Texas. Hey, Dion, you stink. Hey, Dion, we can't stand you. Hey, Dion, get out of Texas. So he points this guy and says, come here. And the guy comes, not your sharpest knife in the drawer. <laughs> here's Dion, here's this guy. They might say anything nasty to you lately. Here's, here's Dion and this guy. Were you ready for him? Dion goes, God bless you. I said, what? He said, may God bless you. This guy goes, man, you didn't have to make it personal. <laughs> now watch this. Do you see what I'm telling you? Dion had to get up and spend a little bit of time ago. I might get an ignorant person or a fruitcake later. I will be, watch, watch this stick with me. Here it comes. I'll be kind to them before they're rude. Am I helping anybody? I, I, I'll be ready for them before they come at me. My wife has a beautiful line. Never argue with an idiot. Because they will pull you down to their level and they will beat you with experience. <laughs> I just hope she's talking to me, not about me. <laughs> you want to go next level? Try this. This is a rough one. I'm going to lay a rough one on you right now. Stop complaining. Come on. Quit letting crap come out of your mouth. It's tough. If you complain, you remain the words out of your mouth or your prison bars. Stop it. Look, we live in America. Right then and there, that's enough. Look, somebody's lying in a hospital bed right here, somewhere within a mile of here, begging for the same opportunity you got and I got. And of all the people you believe, of all those people you listen on the radio, TV, Wall Street Journal, is there anybody you believe more than you? So why would you let crap come out of your mouth? Stop it. Just stop it. Hey, if any of us in this room lost everything we got today, and all we got back tomorrow is what we had today, is not tomorrow the best day of our life? Complain. Just complain. Get up and just spend some time. And I'm going to spend some time, and I'm going to stay on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, this time I'm going to react to it. That's why I walk. I'll be ready for that airport. I'll walk right in. Here's one of them I say all the time. There's some things you can control, some things you can't. I'll be ready for when I'm six hour delay. Oh, Todd and I run about two hours of traffic channel. Some things I can control, some things I can't. Keep going. And number three, your real wealth is not your money. Your real wealth is your time. I usually don't tell this one, but we're in a baseball thing. There was a guy who used to play for New York Mets, Tug McGraw. Had this phrase, you gotta believe. They trained to the Phillies. They interviewed him in Philadelphia and asked him, what do you like better, after turf or grass? He says, I don't know. I've never smoked Astro Turk. <laughs> you usually hear that election year more than you know. His son's a country western singer. His name's Tim McGraw. He married Faith Hill. Back in West Virginia, we call that out kicking your coverage. 